In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use Affinity Designer to take a single object and repeat it along a path, whether it be a shape or a brush stroke. Now in the first part of this lesson, I'll be showing you how to create this object, and then in the second part, I'll be showing you how to repeat it along the path. So if you just want to know how to do that part, then you can use the chapters in the play bar below to skip to that part of the video. Getting started in a new document, I'm going to grab my square tool and I'm going to hold shift and click and drag to draw a perfectly symmetrical square. And I want this square to be pretty small because we're going to be making a bunch of copies of it. So I'm going to size this at around 50 pixels. And then I'll come up here to the tool settings menu and I want to make sure I have snapping enabled. Now I'm going to grab my selection tool and I'm going to hold my alt key or if you're on Mac that would be option and then click and drag while holding the key and then release the key and then snap it to the right edge of the original shape just like that. And once you do that, we want to repeat that eight more times so that we have 10 copies of this square. So to repeat that, I'm just going to press Control J. Or if you're on Mac, it would be Command J. So I'll press this eight times. And now we have 10 squares stacked next to each other. And now we're going to repeat this process, but for the rows. So I'm going to select all of these, hold my Alt key, or again, Option on Mac, click and drag release the key and then snap it to the bottom edge and then release the click. And now we want 14 rows of this one. So I'll press Command J uh, 12 more times. And now we have 10 by 14 squares. So let me select all of these and I'll come over here to the Shape Builder tool. And I'm first gonna choose the Subtract option from the Tool Settings menu. And I'm gonna delete this second row up here by drawing a line through it. And then I'll do the same thing down here with this second row from the bottom. I'll draw a line to delete that as well. And then I'm going to start at this square down here in the bottom right corner, and then I'm going to start deleting an area inside of these shapes here like this. And as I do that, the pattern is being drawn. And there we go. That's the effect we're going for. So now let's add all of these squares together by coming up here to the addition option. And I'm going to draw a line through these to add these all together so that it's all one shape. And then I'll do the same down here as well. And once that's done, we can grab our selection tool. And I want to make this black. So let me change the color to black. And I want to group this together by going to Layer and selecting Group. And now I want to export this as a PNG image. And then we're going to create a brush from that PNG image. So to do that, with the object selected, go to File and select Export. From the drop down menu up here, make sure you have PNG selected. And then from the area drop down, make sure you have selection only selected so that it's only exporting the shape here. And we want to export this at a pretty large, pretty high resolution. So I'm going to change the size from whatever this is to 800. And it should be 800 by 1120 or somewhere thereabouts. And I will click the export button. When prompted, choose a location on your hard drive where you'll know you'll be able to access it easily. And I'm going to title this Brush Tile, and I will click Save. And now I'm going to create a new brush out of this tile. So let me move this off of the screen. And I'm going to come over here to my Brushes menu. And I'm going to create a new category for this brush. So I'll click the menu icon, and I will select Create New Category. And I'm going to name this one Custom Brushes. And then I will click OK to create the new category. And in this new category, I'm going to come back over here to the menu icon. And now I'm going to select New Textured Intensity Brush. And then you will be prompted to choose a file from your hard drive. So I will select my brush tile. And we now have that added in there as a brush. So let me adjust this brush a little bit. I'm going to double click it to open up the Brush Settings menu. And as you can see here, the shape is being stretched along the path, which is not the effect we want. So I'm going to come down here to the body, and I'm going to change this from stretch to repeat. And now it'll be repeated along the path. And now I can close out of this menu. And now I can grab my brushes tool, or my vector brushes tool. I can enable the stabilizer and choose this brush setting, and I can draw with that brush. Now if I want to, I can change the color as well. So to change the color, you would just change the stroke color. So I'll come over here to the stroke color, and I'll change that to something else. And now we end up with that right there. And I can scale this down a little bit. Now if you want to make the stroke larger, if you want to make the brush stroke larger, you can come over here to the stroke menu and use the stroke slider. But sometimes it won't make it as big as you want it to be. So if you want to make it even bigger, just double click the brush again and use the brush width to make it even bigger like that. So let me close out of that. Let me delete this shape now and show you how to apply this to a circle. So I'm going to grab my circle tool. And let me make sure I have the stroke set to none. 
and let me have the fill set to none. And I'm going to click and drag to draw the circle. And I'm going to apply this stroke to the circle. And now I can grab my selection tool. Now, one thing to keep in mind, let me turn off snapping for now. If you come over here to the stroke tab, you'll notice we have this option that says scale with object. As it is right now, when I scale this object down, you see a little bit of distortion there because the, the pattern itself, the brush stroke stays the same size. If I wanna scale everything all together, I can select this option and now it'll scale. It'll allow me to scale the object without losing or distorting any of the uh, previous appearance. And again, if you wanna make the stroke larger, you can use the stroke width slider and you can make it even bigger by coming back over here into the brush settings and increasing the brush width. And that's how you can go about repeating an object along a path using Affinity Designer. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.